Welcome, everybody, to the first installment of Dream Build Repeat podcast with a guest. <laughs> so this is uh, my friend, Queenette, and I'm going to read her bio in just a second, but wanted to welcome you all here to this interactive session where we're talking about passion to profits and what it looks like, the cost of living your dream. And I'm incredibly excited to have my guest, Queenette, here. And I met Queenette um, a few few years ago at an event and she's one of those people that just has a larger than life personality like you meet her and you say I need to know this woman she is so impactful so powerful and so kind and generous I had this idea we were talking on the phone earlier this week and she just was speaking so much life into me and I was like girl the people need to know you the people need to hear from you. And she has her own platform. People love her. But I just said, I want to share her with my friends and my following. So I am pumped that she's here. And we're going to have an incredibly real discussion. But uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Casey Sharperson, and I'm a speaker, a confidence cultivator, a writer, and now I'm a podcast host. <laughs> and the podcast is called Dream, Build, Repeat with Casey Sharperson, and it's available on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify now. It's about to be on Alexa, so it's very exciting. Uh, but you can find out more about me and what I do on CaseySharperson.com. But of course, you can follow me on all the social medias as well. I'm there, super active. Um, so again, welcome. Feel free to share this content with anyone that you feel like needs a little boost of confidence, energy, insight, and all the things. But let me go ahead and introduce Queenette because she is the bomb.com. And here is her bio. Let me scroll back. Okay. Queenette Wobodo is a business coach who helps coaches identify and increase their value in the marketplace. After struggling with sales and marketing, Queenette built her coaching business from $1,188 in six months to $120,000 six months later. She created Profitable Coach Institute to help coaches who transform lives have a greater impact, influence, and income. She helps coaches position themselves as experts and attract premium clients consistently. With a combined audience and reach of over 500,000, Queenette is a sought after speaker on topics including your irresistible message, knowing your value, and expert positioning. Queenette is gifted in income generation and positioning brands to get more traffic that leads to sales. She has appeared on the stages at Georgetown University Business School, the NYC Department of Education, and Lehman College. Queenette lives in Atlanta, Georgia with her husband and their three children. So welcome. Welcome, Queenette. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Casey. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> I mean, it's the bomb. It's your bio. You're dope. I know it. The world knows it. Yeah. You know? you know, it's so funny when you hear it. When you have somebody else read your bio, it's like, oh my goodness, oh, I've come far. Yeah, and and it's crazy too because sometimes you know you listen to a bio and you're like, wait, who is that? They yeah, sound pretty cool. I think I would like to know them as well. Right. Like, is that me? Okay. So this, I'm so, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Like, this is so, um, I think a divine connection because I was listening to this podcast, um, particularly episode two. If you haven't heard it, I would go and listen to it as soon as possible where you talked about, um, um, you know, instead of um, focusing on being perfect, really focus on failure, just fail fast and that message. And you were so open and raw and that really just, touched me deeply because I, I I so appreciate having real conversations that matter, that can move us forward, that can help us push past fear and doubt and all those things that we don't want to talk about. And for you to talk about that and be so transparent in the podcast, I was floored. That's why I had to call you. I was like, no, we have to talk. Like, you know, <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was so like inspired by you, by all the things you shared in that podcast so if you haven't heard it episode two will bless your life like you will be blessed by it truly 
Thank you. And what's funny is I used to struggle so much with this. Like everyone loves this idea of vulnerability. Like we need it. Brene Brown, Brene Brown talks about it, vulnerability. But like when you actually do it, it's kind of that, that like pit sweat situation. Like yeah. I don't want people to think of me differently. And um, it's been cool to kind of go on this journey where God has just been stretching me to say, like, just share, like share what it is that got, that I put in your heart um, mm -hmm. and do it even with the pit sweat, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. And, you know, it's funny that you talked about you don't want people to think of you differently. If anything, I think it just elevated and, and showcased how deep and, and, and impactful you are, right? Not that you weren't before, but I think going there is like, wow, this is another level, another dimension. And so I, I was truly blessed by it. And I think... You know, it's one thing you hear somebody else talk about perfectionism and their struggle. And so it frees you up to say, you know what? I am normal. I am okay. And, you know, just hearing you talk about your struggles with it, uh, you know, that definitely um, did something for me. So thank you for that. Yes, thank you. And I, and this is why, and I think I want to point this out. Like this conversation that we're having right now came from a conversation that Queenette and I had. And it's, and I'm so grateful that she called me to just, say, hey, Casey, this podcast blessed me. And through that conversation, this this opportunity, this divine assignment came up. And it's just, it's so crazy that the moment that we move in obedience, the things that open up and the opportunities that reveal themselves by simply one act of obedience mm -hmm. and how that then frees up other people. So we're mm -hmm. talking about freedom, like when your yes mm -hmm. opened up, this opportunity, not only for you, but also for me. Like I've been wanting to interview people. I've wanted to, oh, wow. to share that. And you had like not only the story, the connection, but also you had resources that you shared with me to make it happen. And I just want to thank you for being obedient, oh. but wanted to point out kind of this, this lesson that has come already. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> All right. So let's get into it. Okay. okay. I shared on the, I shared on the interwebs. A little bit of your bio and people were like girl tell me how can i go from a thousand dollars in six months to over six figures tell me the secret <laughs> but before we get to whatever that secret is that that secret i want you to talk a little bit about your journey how did you become a business coach what was that journey like for you because when we first met you were focused a lot on uh relationships and and what that looks like so go ahead and tell us a little bit about your journey sure so it all started i was a school counselor i was sitting at my desk one day and i was six years into school counseling and i loved and i loved my job i was a high school counselor I loved every every single minute of it and I sat at the desk one day and I said, you know, God, is this it? And at that time, I felt super ungrateful because it's like people are looking for jobs as a school counselor. And here you are, you have a job and you're six years in, not 20 years in, near the retirement. And you're asking God, is this it? So right away, I already knew that something more wanted to come out of me. Um, and then I felt kind of guilty asking for more, right? And so that's, that, was, that was the initial, um, you know, spark, if you will, that I knew that I was in a place that had expired. Then I said, because I was afraid, I said, you know what? Maybe I need a tougher environment. I need a place where it's going to challenge me more. So I decided to go what I call parallel. I decided to go parallel and I got a job as a um, school counselor, but at a suspension site. So I figured if I have kids that are even more, because I was already at a low income school neighborhood, and I love that environment, just where I grew up, and helping make it made me feel fulfilled. So I said, you know, what? I need something more tough because I thought that 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 you know that asking God is there more, and you know, is this it? Needed me to like, I guess, pursue something else that would challenge me. So I went to a school, um, to a suspension site, and that's where God taught me my first lesson, which was um, when I show you a vision, I want you to execute on that vision and not do what you want to do. And that was my first, that was my first, it was, it was painful. Like, um, I don't know if I've ever talked about that, but it was the most painful two and a half years I've ever experienced. Um, and it was because I went parallel instead of um, vertical, uh, because he wanted me to go to my next dimension. And I was so afraid. I said, you know what, let me just do what's safe. And what was safe was parallel. So to speed up the story, um, 
it was painful. I, it was just, it just, I did not belong. It just was not a place for me. And, and in order to make sure that I wasn't going to stay there, it was painful. So fast forward the story. Um, I started live streaming on Periscope. I don't know if you're familiar with Periscope. I was right. live, right? When it first came out, we were like the first there, um, me and a couple other people. Um, and we, I was live streaming three days of uh, three days a week after, after work, right? I would live stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, just giving content. At that time, I was like, I was writing like like master classes. Like each content was like a master class. I was so exhausted, so tired, and I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it like six, seven months straight. And then I started to build an audience. And then I said, okay, um, I was helping women at that time overcome fear of abandonment, rejection, so they can meet and marry Mr. Right. So it was a combination of expert, a relationship expert. And life coaching, so much traffic, so many people. Yes, girl, this is amazing. And then I would make an offer, and it would be crickets. I'm like, wait, you all love this? What happened? Like, I thought you wanted this. And so when I made that, I was so heartbroken. I was like, all these people are commenting, coming online, and then mm -hmm. I made an offer to go deeper with them to help them, you know, on a deeper level. And it was just like total of $1,188. Casey, I was like, uh-uh, this is not going to pay a bill. <laughs> After your consistency, though, after you were building and you were giving sure. of yourself. Yes. So um, one day I said, you know what? I want to have this life. I imagined that I had the vision. I want to have a life where I'm free to go as I want, have the income I want, get up when I felt like getting up. Cause at that time, you know, I was getting up like early just to get to the gym or whatever. Like it was just too, I just felt like, why would I have to get up at five o'clock in the morning? Like it just felt out of like, <laughs> like why? <laughs> right. So I was like, like <laughs> well, I burning desire, Casey, this burning desire to finally leave my nine to five. So I said, somebody has to know how to do this. And that's when I hired my first premium coach, my first high end coach. Knees knocking, not having all the money in the bank. Let's be clear, because I think sometimes people think you have to be ready. I was not ready, but you know what? I had a desire that was more important than the fear of staying in the same place. So my desire was more, right? Hired the coach, followed the strategy, and just like that, converted all the people that I was watching into buyers because I finally knew and I understood how marketing worked. So while I was great with the content, I didn't understand the business aspects of building a business. And so when, you know, when the strategies were laid out, I implemented like no one's business again, being super consistent. And then the money started to come in. Um, and so that transition happened because when people saw like all the work I was doing and all the, you know, my audience and how much, influences that I thought were making a lot of money started to pick my brain. And that's how I got into business coaching. It was just like people pulled me in. I did, it wasn't an, I just, it was not my intention at all. You know, I have a background in counseling and psychology. So it wasn't my intention to do business coaching. It's just that people kept asking me, well, how are you doing this? How are you running this? How are you running that? And so I said, well, y'all have to pay. I just paid a high-end coach, you know. For free. <laughs> you know, working for free out here. <laughs> at all like you know so so that's how i transitioned to business coaching from um ex uh, relationship coaching you know that sort of thing oh my gosh you said so many things you know somebody that like talks in snippets and every snippet is a message in itself like every two lines we can dissect it and like exegesis style like out here so okay you said a few things the first thing you said um, you were talking about how you were uncomfortable because you went parallel instead of going vertical. So I want you to explain kind of what that looks like for you, because I believe I have experienced something similar that where God has said, this is the path. And then you're like, but I bet I can do the path a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So just bless me now <laughs> and then I'll transition over. <laughs> So yep. tell me what that looked like for you. What was that? What was that discomfort? What did you learn in that season? I learned that the vision that we that I have, right, is a preview to what I'm supposed to be doing and not this kind of thing that I'm supposed to doubt. And I learned that whenever I doubt the vision that he's already given me, there will be painful consequences. Mm. Let me like 
not being obedient will cost me more than just being obedient and just doing what he showed me. And um, that is a lesson I don't want to learn again because it was so painful. I'm like, Queenette, you already know what that looks like when you go parallel. And when he showed you the vision, do what you see, do what you see. Um, and so um, I don't know how much more I can say about that, but that, that was just it. It was just like, you know, you saw this, this freedom, this lifestyle where, you know, you wanted to be free, coach women, all these things. And that vision was like, but how, like, how, where am I going to get the money from? I just couldn't wrap my mind around entrepreneurship and like, how do you generate income enough to pay your bills? Like, I just, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have the big belief yet, you know? Um, and so I was like, well, just do something safe and do something that will still, you know, satisfy those, you know, I want to help need and still make yeah. money. And he was like, that's not having faith. And so I'm going to show you that when you don't, when you rely on yourself, there are painful consequences to that. But if you trust me, I will show you, I will give everything you want, you'll have. And that's my life right now, just because I had to push past that fear um, in a painful way initially. <laughs> you know, I was like, get out of here now. I was depressed. Oh I was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. Yeah. No. And and what I think is, is interesting about what you shared in that, you know, God gives you a vision as a preview of what you can experience. But I think what happens is we get... We get comfortable knowing that there is a vision for us mm. that we feel like if we don't put in the work that we're still going to access the vision. But mm. God says I need you to follow the steps in order to move towards the vision and then I'll open up more for you. But we're so stuck in fear and saying like, oh, gosh, I don't have everything at yes. this first step. So yep. now I'm just going to chill until I have everything. But you even said that before you were ready, you hired a high end coach. Yes. <laughs> so you knew you said, I don't have the tools. I see someone that is doing the things that I want to do yes. and lining yourself up with that person, aligning yourself, investing in that person is what really shot you into prosperity, into a strategy, into an opportunity that's going to continue giving you dividends yes. more and more and more. Yes, because that was that's what it means to operate from a place of faith. I had no, I, when I say Casey, I had no, I, I was, I was in the school system. So I was so used to like getting paid from a check. So my mind, that gets so funny. Cause I'm going to think about where I am now and where I was when I first started my mind, I'm, I promise you my mind, I just couldn't wrap my mind around how this person was going to actually give me a strategy that would work. I had to believe like, that's what, that's what we talk about faith. I think faith is an action word. I think, I think we throw it around a lot. I have faith. No, faith is actually, um, you can see faith when you're on the field. And so that was me being on the field. Like, I don't have this cash sitting around for coaching, but we're going to create it, right? And thank goodness for a loving husband, because he was like, I believe in you. And so he paid for that without even yeah. hesitating, all right? And and it was just like, okay, so we're going to do this, right? And so like when I say there was no staircase, you know, we're waiting for the staircase. Mm-hmm. There was no staircase. It was just like a leap, like just here, whatever happened, I'm going to find out. But I trust in this vision. That's all I have was the trust in the vision. Nothing else. That's Nothing. good. Okay. So I have to ask, <laughs> when you say that you coached with somebody at a high level, yes. just give us round numbers. What what did that look like to coach with a high level, um, a high level coach? What was that investment like? So the price tag or like the experience? Yeah, yep, yeah, 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 the price. So it, was, numbers almost, out here. it was almost five figures. It was almost five figures. Okay. Um, it wasn't quite five figures, but it was very close to five figures. Um, but more than the actual number was that, you know, coming from, again, an educational background, we're used to like, all right, 200, 300, 400, like, you know, when you think of like hours and stuff like that, right? So at the most, I'm thinking like 1,000, 200, maybe, 2,000, maybe. When I heard the price, I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Took your breath away a little bit. <laughs> what did you just say? I mean, I mean, I was just like, what? People pay this? Mm -hmm. And a part of me, after I made, after we made that investment, there was this exchange of energy that I was like, you know what? No matter what happens, I'm going to do this. It was just like the minute I paid it, something else happened inside of me. It was like a shift happened inside of me. It was like, oh, okay. 
Now, it's almost like I had no choice but to do exactly what it took to not only get my return on investment, but catapult myself. Like It was just like the thing I needed to move me forward. Had I not made that investment, I would not be where I am today. I know that for a fact. I don't even, I, I know that for a fact because that investment said, Queenette, this is the next level that you're playing at. This is the next dimension for you. And what it also allowed me to do was be able to charge that without any problem because I had already invested that. I can say to someone, well, this is how much my programs cost. 7,500 to 15,000. In fact, I've doubled um, you know, what I paid initially, right? In terms of what I offer now. And so I wouldn't have been able to say that nor be able to energetically attract that had I not made that investment. And so when I tell my clients, like, listen, you know, this is awesome, but unless you've made that kind of investment, trying to charge that is never going to energetically work because you haven't made the investment you want your clients to make in you. Does that make sense? And so um, more than the, the, the dollar amount was just what it, what it grew me up. It was like, all right, you know, enough, enough with the little games, <laughs> you know, like, let's do yes. that. And so, yeah, so that was, it just changed my life completely. Yeah, no, I totally agree because I've also invested in in coaching and training and invested at a high level. And and it's funny when I talk to people and they're like, oh my gosh, this conference is $75. Like, I don't know why they're charging that. I'm right. like, look, do you know how much your bag costs? Let's talk mm -hmm. about it. How much are the shoes on your feet? Right. How much is your car? Like, there are things that we spend our money on, our time investing into. And then when it comes to our purpose, our dream, our vision, we're like, oh, that costs too much. Like, oh, my future is it needs to be cheaper than this. And it's like Absolutely. there's something that happens, an exchange of energy, like you said, that happens when you invest in yourself, when you put time into the vision that God's given you. And what I experienced, at least through coaching, is like you, I had this teeny tiny idea of something. Mm -hmm. And what a coach did for me was open up my eyes to even more. So it's like I didn't even know this whole avenue, this whole realm was even possible. It opened up my mind, my income, my um, emotions even. But then it also opened up relationships with people. Like the people that I have access to, the people that I've coached with, it's amazing. Yeah. And that happens because that that investment, whatever that number of investment is, it's like God will grow you up through that. Mm-hmm. I agree 100%. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, your focus will determine what your life looks like. And so if your focus is on the bags and the shoes and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but if you don't think that you building your vision and your dreams are, are more important investments then it will show in your life. And so, you know, in, in all fairness, I think, um, you know, you're in, like they said, you know, you, 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 you put your treasures where your heart is. So, you just pray that eventually people will wake up at their own time, right? Because it takes, you know, we, I mean, you know, someone could easily said, well, Queen, why did it take you so long? Why did you have to spend three more years? So I guess everybody evolves when they're ready, but you're absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's true. And and I remember that moment where I was like hearing all these different price tags and like the first, the first investment of a few hundred dollars was like, <gasps> <laughs> took my breath away. Yeah. But you start, once you get the fruit of it and you, and you start seeing how everything happens, then I can now with integrity say, here are the, here are the rates, here's the price. Um, and because I've invested now, I don't, like you said, I don't feel the pressure to lower the prices um, or adjust to what people are comfortable to. And I think that's an opportunity to, uh, to kind of elevate mindset and yeah. elevate opportunities by being able to attract that because you've done it. You're doing it from a place of integrity. Absolutely. Yeah. That it makes a huge difference. I mean, you can, you can feel it on somebody, whether um, these prices are something they just made up or the, you know, cause again, money prices and price money is all energy. It's all energy. No one can really pay yeah. you your worth in terms of your time, right? Our time is priceless. So um, yeah. I completely agree. I think energetically, if you're not there or you're still having doubts, then if you say a price, people will feel that and say, hmm, I don't think she thinks she's worth it. And so, you know, mm -hmm. you'll you'll start hearing people, you know, give you that feedback. 
That's good. Okay, now I have to ask you this because I love to be in people's business. And one of the things of people's business, I know they want to know about relationships and stuff. So you've already talked about how supportive your husband is yeah. <laughs> and how and how he heard your heart and what you wanted to build for yourself and for your family. But tell us how you met him. Tell us all the tea, girl. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you a little background first so that the story can actually make sense. So I came, I was born in Nigeria. I came here when I was seven years old. Four years later, when my when I was 12, um, my father passed away. So my mother went to Nigeria to bury him. And um, when she went to Nigeria, she said, all right, you know, she told my brothers and I, I'll be back. And um, so she left. And so the first year, um, my birthday's on Christmas. So, you know, Christmas was coming. And I said to my aunt, oh, when is my mother coming back? Because, you know, when she comes back, you know, they'll have goodies and treats and all this other stuff, right? And she was like, oh, don't worry, your mother will be back. And so I said, okay, cool. So I waited, waited, waited. I stayed up to the December 24th waiting for my mother to come. And um, it was getting late and I was like, and I fell asleep. So the next morning was Christmas. I ran to the living room and, you know, when someone comes back from Nigeria, you smell them before you see them. You smell the food, the motherland, you smell like all the good stuff, right? And I didn't smell like that. I didn't see any of this. So I ran to my house, like, where's my mother? She was like, oh, Queen Ed, you know, she couldn't make it. And I was I was 13. I just turned 13 um, at that that December, right, that Christmas. And then um, the following year, I said to my aunt, you know, is my mother coming back? And she said, yes. And I would wait. And 14 years old, no mom. And then 15 years old, I'd ask the same question. And she said, don't worry, she'll be back or whatever. And no mom. So 16, I stopped asking and I got really angry um, in high school. I remember being a junior. I was 15, I was 16, 17. I remember getting really angry and I said, and I made a vow. I said, I will never ever depend on anyone else again in my life. I said, because when you trust and you love people, they will disappoint you. And then the senior year, I said the same thing. I said, I will never ever, I can't wait to graduate. I was so angry. Um, I was like, I, I can't wait to graduate, go to college, and then never depend on anyone else again in my life. So I vowed to never, um, ever just trust people or depend on them, right? And so fast forward, I got to college, and um, um, I, I met, I was introduced by a mutual friend of, in, in our student, African Student Association to um, my husband now. And um, we were dating, we were dating, dating, going to court, the typical courtship, like real good. Right, I don't know what's going on in this day and age, but like real date, you know, bowling. Real dates, like don't left the house. Like pick up, you know, go to a date without any expectation. Complete go. gentleman, right? <laughs> Complete gentleman. So I was like, he's faking it. I was like, this is <laughs> he's Nigerian. He's faking it. You know, I was like, <laughs> he just he just trying to play it cool until then, and then you know, you know. So I wasn't hearing it. So so I just started to see that this man is super consistent. He says something, he does it. His actions were aligning with everything he said. So I was like, hmm. So after a while, I was like, I started to get feelings for him. And I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. We don't do feelings. Like, we don't do this. You don't love, remember. Um, and so one day we were, he was going to come pick me up for a date. And I was like, you know what? Let me just tell him that, you know, we can't go out anymore. Um, and so I was getting ready and he was going to come and everything. So he pulls up. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Queen, what are you going to say to this man? So I got in the car and I said to him, you know, before we go, I want to tell you something. And he was like, oh, what? Well, you know, like, you know, he's like, you know, what's up? Um, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, we can't go out anymore. We can't go out anymore. He was like, why? Like the look on his face was so shocking because we had been having a good time. Things were vibing, like, you know, just perfect, right? Mm -hmm. he was like, like, why? What did I do? Ugh, that was so sad. Like when he said, what did I do? I was like, no, 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 it's not you. You didn't do anything. It's just, I just know that it's not going to work in the future. And what I was really saying, right? What I was really saying was, I don't think if you got to know me, you're going to like me, you're going to love me. Because growing up, I didn't feel lovable. I felt like if my mother didn't love me enough to come back, no one could ever love me. This was the story I had in my mind for so many years, all the way up to college. Um, and so... 
I didn't say that to him. What I was saying to him was like, well, you know, this is not going to work. I don't want to be a nurse. I don't want to be this. I don't want to do that. And he just never asked me that. He just never said anything about that. And I said, you know, you're going to want this. You're going to want a woman who's this and all these. I just had all these things I said that he was going to want for me. And pretty much everything I was saying was like, I'm not good enough. Like, you're, I'm not going to be good enough for you. So eventually you'll get tired and you'll leave anyway. So let's just break it off right now. Girl, you sat in that car <laughs> for three hours. <laughs> he was like, listen, <laughs> I want you for exactly who you are. And at that time, Casey, let me keep it real with you. I wasn't even trying to impress. You know how we try to impress people? Yeah. Being myself because I already knew it wasn't gonna work. I didn't care, so I was being clear. Yeah, it's already done. I, like I'm gonna just chill. <laughs> I, yeah, I was. There was no. I was just being myself. And he was like, "No, I want you. Like it's you that I like." We talk, talk. Long story short, um, you know, I finally said, "Oh my God, Queen, I just let him love you. Like just let him love you. Like just allow yourself to be loved. Like." And so that was, and then most, and you were still together now. Obviously, he's married, going on 13 years. Um, is it 13 years now? Yeah. So, you know, but that was my my experience with like self-worth and and you know, even beginning to understand what that means. And so helping women now as a business coach identify their own value um and their worth in the marketplace. I think it is not only like a business thing, but it's very personal because that's like that's that was pretty much one of the most painful experiences I've ever had, which was knowing my inherent worth um, as a child of God, but also knowing my value in the marketplace. Like I'm about to get Terry. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my business. <laughs> oh my gosh, I. That was so incredibly powerful for a few reasons, because when you identified a time where someone was trying to provide an opportunity, they like they were putting themselves out there and saying, this is what I have to offer you. And you were like blocking it. You said, no, I don't want to deal with that. And I just wonder how often we do that. And we are like sabotaging our future because of the story that we're telling ourselves, because we don't feel like we have value. We don't feel like we have anything to offer a relationship, a client, an employee, like all those different things. It's these stories that we've been telling ourselves over and over and over again. Yes. And you sharing that your story was, the moment that I get too close is the moment that I open myself up for pain and suffering. So I'm just going to stay distant. Like how many of us don't ever have that realization. So now we've sabotaged our, our future relationships and we're not able to, to thrive and go deeper with people. Yes. I mean, you just summarize that like Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these <laughs> skills. <laughs> Like, no, it, it was just powerful. It, it was powerful. And even you having your, your vulnerable moment of remembering, yeah. because I know, you know, those moments that change your life forever, like those conversations that change your life forever. I, I still get teared up telling some of the stories. I'm like, man, like, I just think about if I had never, if I had never pushed past that fear, if I'd never taken that opportunity, even though it was uncomfortable, even though I didn't feel like I was worth it, where would I be? Mm. And you having that that insight in that moment and now sharing that insight with other people is so freeing. Yeah. It's so freeing. And yeah. I believe that people that listen to your story are going to be awakened to those stuck in sabotage stories that they have been telling themselves and that they've been telling others and that this is just going to be an awakening for them to start moving in their future and in their um, in the things that God has for them. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I hope so. I hope so. Because it was, it was a big deal and I didn't realize how I was sabotaging, you know, friendships and my wall was up and I, even when people were trying to be my friend, I was like, all right, you know, I'll give them a little bit, but not enough. And it was yeah. just, it was just a, this deep, deep, deep fear of just being hurt again. Um, and so, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's good. So I, I know that you are pursuing your passion. You're making money from your passion. But what advice would you have for someone that feels like, I don't think I have anything that I'm passionate about that I could actually make money from? Because this mm -hmm. is what you do. You specialize. You yeah. specialize 
in this and helping people monetize uh, from their ideas. So what would you t tell someone? What would you say to someone that says, I don't have anything that I can make money from. I think I'm destined to work this job that I don't like, mm -hmm. that I have to climb this ladder because everyone else told me to. So what would you say to that person? Um, I would say, well, three things, right? But first, let me share this with you. When I when I was in um, when I was going studying to become a counselor, I registered for counseling. You know how you go through the group coaching, um, the, the group um, interviews, and everything. You write your essay, all these things, right? So I got accepted into the graduate school counseling program. Registered, got my classes, spoke to the um, to the chairman, everything. And I kept my uncle and aunt and all these people around me kept saying, Quinette, you need to do nursing. Like you really need to do nursing. You need to have something that's gonna be. You're gonna. You need something. You need to do something that's gonna. Um, guarantee a job when you finish. So what I, what did I do? I dropped all of my graduate school program classes and I went to register for pre-nursing classes. Casey, I was sitting in chemistry and anatomy and physiology. Girl. And I had Saturday <laughs> I had Saturday classes. Chemistry was like I was horrible at chemistry. Only see yeah. I've ever gotten with chemistry, okay? I have yeah. I have fights with chemistry. <laughs> Girl. This Saturday, right, I was in, chem it was a chemistry anatomy. I don't remember which class it was. I think it was chemistry. It was a weekend class. And I was sitting there and the professor was so amazing. Like she was like, and chemistry did this and these symbols and all these things. She was so passionate. And I'm watching this woman operating her purpose, so passionate about chemistry. And I'm sitting, I'm like, Queenette, what are you doing here? Like, what are you doing here? So I said, you know what? I don't care what's gonna happen. I need to go back to counseling. So, um, so I was like, you know what? Let me go see the. Let me go see the um, the AP. So during the week, I was like, okay. Um, her her room number is nineteen. So I was like walking towards her room number. I was like at fifteen. I was like, oh my god. You know, I want I want her, I want her to be there, but then I don't want her to be there. So I'm like walking. I'm like, all right, sixteen. And I'm walking, I'm like, all right, room 17, room 18. I'm sweating. I'm like, God, please don't let this lady be here. So I can have, so it could be confirmation to turn back and run while I still am. <laughs> you know, you know how you want confirmation for the wrong yes. thing? <laughs> yes. I was like, if she's not there, all right. So I was I got to 18 and then room 19, right? And so I look and her secretary is there. So I said, Hey, is Dr. Kabo there? And she was like, Yeah, come on in. I was like, oh. You know, I was like, okay, great. So Dr. DeVoe, so I go in and I say, hi, Dr. DeVoe. She's like, hi, Queenette. Hey, what happened? I was like, so I, I began to say, I'm so sorry. You know, I did it. And I said, she was like, hold on, hold on. You know, she goes, forgive yourself. Like, we make mistakes. Like, forgive yourself. I'm kidding. That, I was like, I had to taste the, I had to sit and forgive myself. That was the first time I had ever understood or even thought of this idea that I was on the line to be forgiven and that um that I could make a mistake and 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 be able to start again right so she said you know there's no problem register for the next semester in the fall we'll love to have you, you she remembered me from the interview and she said we would love wow. to move you back and so she was just like go through the um you know the process again and um you know fill this out or whatever she said it like it was nothing. And in my head, I made this thing into like a mountain that was unscalable. And she was just like, no, we loved you in the interview. Come back in the fall. And I'm just like, wow, I could make a mistake and get another chance and everything will be fine. So one thing I want all the listeners um, to hear is that even if you've made a mistake, forgive yourself. Even if you've made a mistake, you can start all over. And, and more importantly, trust yourself because I knew deep down that I wanted to be a counselor. I wanted to be in the psych world. Like I love this idea of how the, you know, the, like human behavior, how we think, um, what makes us act. Like I love that. I knew I was out of, out of alignment with nursing, but that was my fears. Like I need a job. I need a job. I need a job. So fear, I allowed fear to, to, to cause me to drop those classes. Right. But even still, I have an opportunity to still try again. And, and so I share that because I just want us to know, like, we've messed up. We're all going to mess up. That's life, right? But we get, to, we get to start again. We get to try again. We get to have another chance. It's not the end of it all, you know? Yeah. And so I think the number one thing I would say, because that freed me up to, like, just keep trying. When you talked about in your podcast, just fail fast. Just fail. Just fail quickly and move. And I love that when you said that because it's true. So if you failed before, 
some things that keep us stuck and we think that you know we don't have this dream or whatever is because I think fear is is telling us that we don't have a dream because the dream that we really have is so big that we're like, no, 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 it can't possibly be that. And so we think we don't have a dream. So I would say, number one, what is that vision that are like, oh, no, it, God can't possibly think I can do that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know that, that, that like, what? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Especially, and I think that's especially true if you have an idea that you haven't seen anybody do mm. and that you don't even feel qualified for it. But girl, that's a whole message. I feel yes. <laughs> yes. What? Oh my goodness. So I would say number one, um, you know, I, I mean, I listened to a couple of things. Forgive yourself, know that you can start again and then trust yourself. You know exactly what God has shown you. Trust yourself, right? So I, I would say that's like 1.1.2, 1 1.2. Like it all, it all belongs together. Like I want that to be like number one. Number two would be um, strategy. Um, you know, identify a coach that um, you know will unlock the best in you. This is really, really important. Not a coach that you want to be around, a coach that's designed to unlock the best in you. And there's a difference. Some people want to coach with someone to be around this particular environment because, again, that fear. If I get close to this person, I'll be able to do X, Y, and Z. Big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. You need to look for a coach that has the spirit, the wherewithal, the discernment, the strength to pull out the best in you. And that's different, right? Than trying to get close to someone so you can kind of get the fame or whatever it is that's around them. You're seeing them that they're better than you, but you're actually the same as they are. It's just that they're a couple of years ahead of you in terms of yeah. what we've been building, right? And so identify a coach um, in terms of strategy that can unlock what is deep down within you and that can hold you accountable to that vision and to that dream, right? Um, so that's number two. And the last one I would say is Consistent execution, consistent execution. A lot of the things, the issues, whatever problems, ideas, whatever can be solved with consistent execution. So it's almost like you have to be relentless. And I don't use that word lightly because when I'm in an execution mode, it's relentless. It's it's coming back from work with three kids and a husband and going on Periscope, Facebook Live three days a week consistently, even if no one shows up. That means with zero people watching, that you do what God said to do. And you do that over and over and over with no proof that what you're doing is going to work. Do that for a year. Girl, you'll be somewhere else. <laughs> well, well, I mean, isn't that crazy? Because with this idea of showing up, even when people don't see you, there are always people watching. Yeah. Always. Like always people watching. And the, the crazy thing is, is like when I when I work with people, like the ability to say, oh, I know that this person does this. I see that they're consistent. Um, your name could be being pitched in rooms that you don't even know. Like you don't personally know anybody in the room, but your name is being brought up because you've been consistent, because you've been executing even when you don't see the results that you think, you know, even when you don't see, but ultimately, God sees everything. Maybe he's working within you to say, will you be consistent? Can I trust you with this mantle? The answer is yes, but will you trust yourself with this mantle? Mm, come on, Casey, let them know. You know? Yes, absolutely. And and here's the thing about faith. That's when your faith is tested. By the way, there are comments. I just want you to know. <laughs> I don't know if you can see them. But um, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> um and, and we have people that are wanting to throw their phone because this is fire, <laughs> straight fire. Okay, <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, but, but Casey, to your point, right? That's where faith really shows up. When people say I have faith, that doesn't that's not true. You, we don't know that when you have faith is when you do it, even when no one, when you, when, when you, when no one's there, you, you, you follow this, this vision that makes you look crazy. Right, because you're following the vision. You're not following what's already proven. Proof when you when you can see something, that's not faith because you see it. It's the things yeah. that you haven't been able to see, and so I think that's when your faith is really tested. When you just do it and you do it and you do it, knowing that listen, I don't know when. Not only do I not know if this is gonna work, I don't know when it's gonna work. I don't know when I'm gonna get another clue. Right? Yeah. God is not gonna give you all the puzzle pieces. 
He's not, and that's what I should mention, he's not gonna give you the, all of the puzzle pieces. You can forget about that. You'll get one after you've been obedient with what's already been given. And until you've been obedient with what I already gave, you are not gonna see another puzzle piece. So if you're confused and you're all over the place, it's because he's like, use what's been given. Until you use what's been given, you're not going to see another another clue. And you'll be yeah. spinning around in you know in circles. And I, ask me how I know. <laughs> But we have both been there. I believe that we've had those conversations <laughs> where we're like, wait, I don't know what to do next. And Girl. in the big reminder where God is like, but have you done the last thing that I asked? Okay. And we try to do all these other ideas. And he's like, but will you do the thing that I said to do? Even though it's hard, even though you don't know, I will make provision for it. But we don't trust God's provision. Mm. Mm. We, we don't trust that he has a plan. We mm. think that we have to manipulate the plan and then we get tired manipulating the plan. <laughs> we out here frustrated, tired, hiring this coach, watching this video, taking this course, doing all this different stuff, trying to figure it out. And God's like, I have given you already. I've given you the thing. Do the thing, align yourself with that particular idea and I will make provision. Drop mic. <laughs> I mean, that's that's just what it is. And I'm saying from personal experience. <laughs> oh my God, I want to see these particular results. And he's like, yeah, but <laughs> did you do what I asked you to do? And once you have that moment where you go, no, I haven't. I haven't been honest with myself. Mm. And I've been avoiding this particular thing because I'm afraid of failing. Mm. I'm afraid of not measuring up to the measure, the thing that God's expecting from me. But God is not going to put like he's not looking at you saying that you're not doing enough. Right. He's just saying, I want you to believe that I have more for you and that I will provide the more for you. Yes, absolutely. And not only will he provide the more. Right. Because here's the thing. The reason why sometimes I feel like we get stuck is because. The thing he wants us to do, you can't see the you can't see the path to the cash, right? Let's be honest, right? You like, well, we want to do this, but how do I make money? God, at least that's been my thing. Like, I get it, God, but how do I make money? Like, how do I get the cash? Like, I get it, I would love to, but I don't see how this gets there. All right. Yeah. Do you want? And 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 this is our comment. Uh, God and I have a you know a unique conversation. He's like, okay, little girl, <laughs> if I tell you one more yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, yeah, yes, Casey, yes. This was good. This is good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, what? you are a powerhouse. I am. Have any questions? I feel like, did anybody yeah, have Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's see if there are any questions. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Um, go ahead and drop those in the comment section. But while the comments are coming yeah. through, um, tell us where we can connect with you, how we can connect with you so that we can get more of the gym. <laughs> Sure. So I'm Queen at Wobodo at um on Facebook on and on Instagram. Um, and that's where you find me. If you want to connect with me, you can email me at info at queenette.com. Um, if you want to chat all things about identifying your value in the marketplace and also how to increase your value in the marketplace. Because Casey, you know, Casey, what one thing you shared in the podcast that really touched me, it made me a little sad. Um, but I understood it because I experienced it was when you said um, you were people would hire you and then not pay you what they said they would pay you or you would accept less than what you were worth. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I remember um, not knowing my value in the marketplace and just taking, you know, you know what people were willing to pay. Um, and then finally coming into my own and understand like, no, Queen, Ed, this is this is what is worth your time in the marketplace. This is your value. This is what you bring. When you come into the room, this is what you bring. When you help people, this is what you bring. This is how their lives change. Now, what price yeah. are you going to put on that? And so I just believe deep down in my heart, when I help women understand their value in the marketplace and learn how to increase it, um, then I'm not only am I doing, um, you know, not only am I helping their business, but I help them as a woman. And that's what I, that's what, that's one of the things that really blessed me is that not, not only do my clients pay me, but they pray for me because they feel like I'm changing their lives beyond business. And I cannot think of a better job than combining counseling and business coaching together. I cannot, like God couldn't have scripted it better. 
It couldn't have. Yeah. And I was running from business coach. I was like, I'm not a business coach. You know, I was running from it. He's like, listen, this is the yeah. yeah. I, I remember, girl. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Casey was in the room when we were, um, you know, trying to yes. figure out. Like, you know, you were there. Yeah. So, you know. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, and I love that you're honest about that and saying that you're you're honest about your growth and where you started and how God has grown you up um, in that particular thing. But there are a few questions. So, uh, so Ryan wants to know while well, she's loving it. She's like, listen, listen, yeah. she's loving all of it. And her question is, what was the first program that you launched? Uh, as a as a relationship or business, or does it matter? Yeah, tell us, tell us. Well, both. number the one was um, date like a queen. I was teaching um, professional women how to date like a queen, like how to truly um, understand your worth and how to uh, um, not only attract a high quality man, but a high quality man who is ready to get married. There's a difference mm -hmm. between high yeah. quality men and then high quality men who are emotionally available to say, I cannot wait to court you, date you, and then say, put a ring on it without all these extra games. Like, I was just like, no, how do I teach women how to date like a queen? So I have a program called Date Like a Queen. Um, and then I Am Enough Academy was one of my like life coaching therapy type um, program. Mm -hmm. I created that program for myself. It's really deep, it's intense. Um, <laughs> uh, I created it for myself. And then of course I sold it because I knew that's what I needed, that I needed, so people kept asking me, Queen, how did you heal? Because I, I didn't talk about therapy and all the things that I went through to really be the woman I am today. I remember, you know, I shared my, my, um, you know, the story that hurt me, but I didn't, I didn't, we didn't, I don't think we have enough time, but I went through a whole healing process. I have therapy, yeah. like I just, it was a whole transformation. I had to dig up the not so good stuff, get rid of that so I can fill up with some of the wonderful things that, um, that I'm, I'm enjoying now. Um, so I put that in the program. I am enough Academy and that has blessed women, um, you know, tremendously, but that was what I needed. Um, so that's what I created. Yeah. And then business, I have a program called profitable coach Academy where I help women start or scale a profitable coaching company. Um, on my campus, we do not shrink when it comes to price points. Um, you have, you will know how to actually say a message so that people know what you do and why they should pay you. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't emphasize how important that is for you to actually know what your value is in the marketplace. If you know your value in the marketplace, people are more than happy to pay you. But if you don't even know your value, you don't know how to increase it, you'll be saying a lot of things and people are like, you know, oh, that's so sweet. They'll clap and they'll, that's what happened to me when I was making a thousand dollars. They'll clap, they're like, you go girl. But then no, tired. I didn't understand how the marketplace worked. And so one of the things we learned quickly is, um. How do you, um, first of all, understand the marketing strategies, but knowing your value is step number one. And a lot of amazing people, coaches, speakers, authors, I see it every single day when they're, they're amazing, but they have no idea what the value is of what they do in the marketplace. And those are two different things. So you can be a beautiful, wonderful person and not get paid. Yeah. So how do we transition that to um, what is the skill set? What are the gifts already been given? in the marketplace, how do we craft a message and a, and a brand around it so that you can sell your programs? Um, and I like high end, so I usually help yeah. my friends be positioned. Yeah. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. And so this, this idea of knowing your value and helping you get your messaging together, then I think that transitions into this next question where uh, the question is, how did you move past the let me pick your brain yeah. phase, the valued with currency, it says, yeah you know, with currency phase. So how do you go from people love me on Periscope, people love me on the internet. They always tell me how inspired they are. They're always saying that I'm so wonderful, keep doing yep. what I'm doing, but they're not writing those checks. Yep. You know, we're not here in the PayPal bling. They're not sending you cash app. How do you go from, <laughs> from free to paid? <laughs> There's a clear strategy for this, right? Um, number one, again, it goes back to knowing your value, knowing what it is that they actually want from you. So yeah. people can be picking your brain, but you don't know what they want from you. That's number one, right? And number two is yeah. there's two different conversations you can have with people. One is a conversation where you are letting them know how you can help them. And then the other conversation is you're just giving away your goods for free, right? So what I teach you is how to separate those two. Number one, on one page, you'll see, these are things when people call me and inbox me and all this good stuff, this is the things I say to them. 
this is the things that they have to pay for. And knowing the difference, when I finally, because people will be like, well, don't give it away for free. But I didn't know what that meant. I had to like break it down like, oh, just say this. And then yeah. save all of these um, for, for payments, right? And so when people approach you, that's actually a very, very good thing. If you know how to have sales conversation or discovery session based conversation, you will get paid over and over and over and over again. The only thing is that you just don't know how to position your value. So they say, oh, ding, 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 ding. That's what I need. And this is the work. So therefore I have to pay. It goes back to just knowing how to have those conversations. And I have sales scripts for my clients. So they know exactly say this. Don't say that. If you say all this stuff, they'll say thank you. They'll hang up and they'll move on to someone that actually has the knowledge and the skills to have these conversations. So it goes back to like some of the trainings and stuff, but yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I love that. And it sounds like you have boundaries, which I think online boundaries get blurred. And I agree, like I can't, if you're asking me, you know, how to pray about something to, to support you in prayer, I'm like, yes, I will absolutely support you. If right. you're asking how to price yourself um, on how to be a speaker, I'm going to tell you, you need to hire me for that. Right. <laughs> if you want strategy, like straight up in-depth strategy to see full transformation, not just the taste that you get from the inspiration, you got to pay for it. Right. And you have to have, you know, you have to have boundaries in that way. And mm -hmm. I think it also helps your clients understand, do I, am I ready for this level of investment? And am I ready for this transformation? Because clearly I've gotten this far from the free content. What can I get from investing uh, my energy, my space, my time with this coach? Right. And knowing what people will pay for and what they won't pay for is one of the things I teach my clients. Because again, yeah. I go back, I work with, I tend to attract high, high quality, purpose driven women, right? Um, and just like when someone called you, when someone called and said, um, you know, if you want me to, you know, praying is one thing, but the strategy is different. What is those strategies? Like, right? What are those strategies? Because you may say strategies, but they don't even know what that means. So, what are the, the words? What are the phrases that you can share with them that will say, oh, and again, we sometimes we assume that people know what we what we our value is and what we can do for them, right. and until that is stated clearly, which is again, it's like this is a is, is a is a sheet. What is the most powerful sheet I've ever created? Yeah. Because when you know what it is that you are actually offering, then then only then can they make the connection to a price tag. But if it's just like if you say strategy, well, what does that mean? Strategy, I can get strategy. They think they can get strategy anywhere. But when you said, like, yeah. number one, you, we'll do this. Number two, we'll do this. Number three, we'll do number four. In their mind, they're autom they all automatically know that that comes with a payment. Yeah. But if you don't know how to articulate it, then it sounds like, well, we're just having a friendly conversation. So it's those discovery, like Ryan said, the discovery-based sales conversation. Yeah. And it's, it's very like relaxing. Like I call it soulful selling. Like there's just nothing icky about it. This is yeah. what I can help you do. This is how I change lives. And then um, are you ready to make the, the next step? That's it. Yeah. I love that. And I do believe that you taught a whole master class. So I surely hope that <laughs> the people will rewind, like go back, start from the top of this podcast and move all the way through because oh. you're dropping all the gems. Like you you gave us you gave us a little bit of strategy in there. If yeah. people were listening, if yeah. they were listening, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but this this is the power of investing your time into into this conversation, like being present into this conversation as a listener. You get the gems, right? But I love this. I want to thank you so much, Queenette, for coming, uh, for all the interaction on um, online as well. We're so grateful for you. And Queenette, I want everyone that's listening to connect with Queenette online. Um, I'm sure as we continue this podcast, she'll be back. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure she'll be back. Don't you fret. Uh, but I'm just really grateful that uh, that you shared your, your space, your energy, your wisdom. Queenette, you are, again, a powerhouse. And I know that the world needs to hear your voice and what you offer and the transformation that you provide. So I just want to thank you again so much. Oh. And uh, for those of you, again, this is your first time joining Dream Builder Pete. Go ahead and subscribe online. Uh, we're going to be doing more uh, more podcasts. It's on iTunes, Google Play, and 
Spotify. So excited to have you. If you want to learn more about me, you can head over to CaseySharperson.com for speaking requests if you want me to come and share with your people. Um, if, if you want to, Queenette is clapping. You guys can't hear it, but she's clapping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that forgot. They're going to, this is the podcast. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They can't see your face, but Queenette is clapping. <laughs> when, when I talked about speaking. So um, again, if you need support with following your dreams, with identifying your dreams, um, and really honing deep into, into who you are, who God created you to be, I am more than happy to help with that. Head on over to CaseySharperson.com to learn more. And Queenette, I think I think that's it. Are there any last words that you'd like to add that you want to leave the people with? You left so many. Yes. The last but I know. I want to give you the option. <laughs> Sure. The last thing I'll say, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Casey. I, it, when I think of this podcast, I envision so many amazing people coming on here, sharing nuggets. I think this will be the standard for how we have conversations with high quality women who believe in God, um, who have dreams that they want to build um, and repeat, right? Um, but I just see so, like, I just, in my mind, I just envision, because like, you're such an excellent speaker. That's why I was clapping when you talk about speaking. And I share that with you. I, I, I am so inspired when you speak on stage and the way you have confidence and you own that mic. Like, I tell people, like, even though I'm on Facebook, I'm comfortable on Facebook. It's a different story when you have a whole audience. <laughs> so I'm inspired um, when you, when I see you speak on stage. So um, so the last thing I'll say is this, um, ladies, right, um, is everything you need is already inside of you and nothing is missing. OK, so just go forward um, and trust yourself. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> it's already inside of you. It's already inside of you. So thank you so much, Queenette. Thank you all for listening. It has been an honor and a pleasure. And I love you so much, Queen. <laughs> oh, I love you too, Casey. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everyone.